Good morning. My name is Leo Chen Bi Dao. I'm the uh, topical chair of Industry 4.0 Conference at the 2019 AICG Spring Meeting. Today, I'm very happy that uh, we have Professor Wen Ka from Columbia University Chemical Engineering Department talking about uh, AI. Um, welcome. Thank you, Leo. So uh, you spoke about the AI starting off very strong and promising in 1980s and 90s, right? And right. then things really slowed down over the decade. So what is old and what is new about AI application in chemical engineering? And how much is new and how much is old? Really, how much of it is AI? Right, yeah. Uh, thank you very much again for this uh, opportunity to do this interview. And thank you for the uh, uh, invitation to do the uh, plenary this uh, morning. Uh, well, you know, uh, given all the excitement about AI, um, uh, particularly in chemical engineering, uh, people are, uh, particularly the younger folks, are surprised to know uh, how old many of these ideas are in uh, uh, chemical engineering. As, as I mentioned in the plenary this morning, um, AI really started in chemical engineering in the early 80s. And there was a lot of work done uh, using uh, expert system ideas at the time. Uh, the key uh, ideas there were about representing symbolic knowledge and doing uh, inference with them. And then came the neural networks uh, phase uh, in phase two, as I call them, uh, in the early 90s through uh, uh, mid 2000s. So um, uh, many of the work I see now in uh, say diagnosis, control, process intensification, uh, using machine learning techniques. Uh, a lot of those ideas were uh, uh, demonstrated uh, in the 80s and 90s uh, as uh, in prototypes, and in some cases, actually, industrial applications uh, were uh, fielded. So what is new now is the opportunity to be able to do those things uh, much more quickly uh, and much more easily and much more cheaply because of the machine learning uh, tools that have evolved, uh, particularly in the last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, certainly the ease of doing AI-based approaches uh, have gotten uh, much uh, better. Uh, but there are still uh, challenges uh, that are out there um, along the lines I mentioned uh, this morning. So what are the challenging uh, challenges and opportunity for chemical engineer? What do you think is the role of academics can play in this field? Right. Um, I would I broadly classify the challenges and opportunities into uh, uh, three broad uh, categories. Um, uh, the first one is what I would call as relatively easy problems, and these are problems where plenty of data is available and. Um, uh, some of the easy to use machine learning techniques uh, can be used to extract value out of them. You know, these could be clustering algorithms, uh, could be random forest uh, kind of techniques, or a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, and one finds this kind of data now available for uh, many process operations uh, applications, um, uh, real time monitoring, uh, you know, equipment health monitoring, for example, uh, and um, uh, diagnosis and control kind of applications, uh, there's plenty of data available, uh, much more than what we could get our hands on, say, 20 years ago. Uh, and so that area has many low-hanging fruits uh, which we can go after. Another one would be in materials uh, science, predicting properties from structure or predicting structure from uh, property, that sort of thing. Uh, again, there's a lot more data available. So these are what I would call as easy problems. The hard problems, uh, the, uh, and so the easy problems, we can do them right now. The hard, the hard problems are those where you have to combine first principles knowledge with uh, data-driven uh, techniques. And so this is what I would call as hybrid models, building causality or causal mechanisms into the models, and uh, that takes much more effort. It's not a matter of just applying blindly machine learning technique on a bunch of data. And that requires much more uh, uh, deeper thinking about how to do these things right. And that I expect to take another 10 years or so to do them well. We demonstrated how to do these things 20 years ago in phase two, but we still have ways to go on that. And then comes even harder problems, which I think would take maybe 10 to 20 years. And that is uh, developing Watson-like systems 
for chemical engineering applications, which is where you need to develop uh, domain-specific languages, domain-specific compilers, and domain-specific uh, ontologies along the lines I mentioned in my uh, plenary uh, talk. And so these are, these are the problems. I think the hard and harder problems are the ones academics should focus on. That's where I think uh, conceptual progress is needed, which is what ideally universities are set up to do. And so I would encourage uh, faculty and students to look at these kind of problems, which are 10 years out and 20 years out, and, uh, and try to make uh, uh, progress on uh, those things. So that's a really good answer. So if we are really successful in implementing AI in chemical engineering, so how do you see AI in the next 10 to 20 years? What would we, what would we be doing different? Yeah, I think it's, it's really an exciting time to be in AI. So I've been doing AI since 1983. So I've seen about 35 years of AI. And uh, looking back, I think many of the problems we started working on, diagnosis, control, materials design, for example, process safety, uh, we were, uh, in some cases um, 20 years too early, in some cases 30 years too early to attack those problems. Uh, now a lot of things have changed. Uh, there's a lot more computer power available, better languages, easy to use languages are available, communication infrastructure is better, and then also there's lots of data available. So uh, I think it's really exciting uh, timing to uh, do AI, and I, I think AI this time around, we have gone two phases of uh, this, and as as I mentioned, there was, there was hype associated with the expert system cycle. There was hype associated with the neural networks in the 90s, and there is some hype even now. There, I can I can see certain things being overpromised. Uh, that are these are problems which I would classify them to be in the hard and harder category. Those things cannot be done right now. It will still take some time. But that being said, uh, the easy problems I think are there are so many low hanging fruits uh, which we knew how to pick then, but we simply couldn't scale uh, because of the lack of uh, hardware and software support. Uh, I think that we will see. So there's going to be a lot of uh, interesting applications fielded uh, in a variety of uh, areas in chemical engineering. And as, as we work through them, I would like to see the universities, uh, you know, my academic colleagues, to be pushing the frontiers on, on the um, hard and harder problems uh, so that uh, when we are done with the low-hanging fruits, we are ready for uh, the fruits which are at the uh, higher level. So uh, I see right now, for example, in diagnosis and control as an example, or even in materials design, uh, when I read some of the papers, new papers, and uh, listen to the talks, uh, there's a strong deja vu feeling for me. I, I see that, I say, yeah, yeah, I've seen this before, and actually it wasn't, it was done actually 20, 25 years ago. So um, I think it is worthwhile for people to go back and take a look at uh, some of the older papers because there's some really neat ideas in there. And so, but this time I think the timing is very good. Uh, we should be continually seeing for the coming years uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, inroads that AI builds into uh, process systems engineering and in chemical engineering in general. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us today. Thank you, Leo. Thank you. Thanks.